Alright, well, I'll, I'll um, I'll s just somehow boot the thing up. Um, first of all, I guess, welcome. Thanks for coming. Uh, Sven is going to talk briefly, like, sort of welcome you all as well. But you've, you've all seen the schedule, it's all on the wiki. Um, the day is going to run pretty loose, you know, it's like, we're not pushed for time, hopefully. Uh, yeah, so, I guess, Sven will say something in there. Yeah, probably you one as well. Come on, say something. So, I'll hand over. Okay. So, welcome to Open Risk Project Meeting in Stockholm. To Chile and but sunny Stockholm. Uh, nice to see all of you here. And you're also welcome to the real time embedded premises. May I say a few words about real time before we start? We are a, a small consulting company, like around 20 people. And we are specialized in embedded systems, both for software and hardware. Uh, focus areas are FPGA, uh, Linux for embedded systems, virtual systems, and yeah, embedded systems. A few practicalities. Uh, yeah, this is the area, the, the offices over there is, are closed. In the office over there, I have a small demonstration running on the on the board I I blogged on, so we can take a look at every time you have a time. There are two toilets over there, yeah, and there are water and coke in the fridge and beer <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> after twelve. After twelve. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also pretty soon. And fruit, and we have some coffee hmm. and cakes. So I think we will manage until the dinner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Sven, what's the password for the Wi Fi? The it's here, it's open risk RTE. Okay, cool. Small. All lowercase. Lowercase. Okay, so let's start. Alright, uh, yeah, I was going to get you on as well. Mm -hmm. Jump up and sort of. Well. well, this is actually not an interaction of course, okay? Yeah, but ah. interaction of course, ah, risk and other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, this is the It's the right <laughs> format, but maybe you can read it anyhow. I guess it should be wider, but that doesn't matter. Not much. Uh, I guess there are more seats here, if, if you like. And perhaps it's good if we further on, when we have a discussion later on, it's as much as people can sit and see each other. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we can, yeah, sooner or later perhaps make a few more tables so everyone can sit in the, in the same circle. Yeah, anyhow, uh, for you who don't know me, I'm... Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm working at Orsok. My name is Johan Rilgård. Mm -hmm. And for you who don't know Orsok, just shortly we are... Uh, started as a consulting company, expert in FDA and ASIC design. Uh, we are heavily focused on open source hardware since we our engagement in open course and the open risk project and do a lot of commercial projects related to the technology as well. We have some, uh, some product development as well. Uh, I guess some of you have seen our development boards that was aimed for the open risk process or risk science and also do some some product developments for for customers that was the commercial things everyone was afraid of and we there 
with the camera. So now you can turn it on. <laughs> uh, anyhow, yeah, I discussed in what I should present here, but some history about open cores might be in place. And it started in 99, I think perhaps most of you know most of this, and, and if you don't, it's, it's good that you, you, you know it. Uh, it was founded by a guy dam named Damian Lampert uh, in Slovenia. And uh, he actually, I guess, maybe the starting point was that he wanted to do an open source processor. So he started doing the open risk project, open risk processor project, and when that started to take place, so he needed some place to, to host it or have it uh, available for everyone to, to use. So then he started open course. Uh, and quite soon after that, uh, Flextronic Semiconductor went in and supported uh, both the open course design and development and of course also quite heavily on the open risk projects. Uh, unfortunately, uh, after I think it was 2003, some part or parts of, of Flextronics was sold and there were some reconstructions and they didn't saw the interest in, in, in this anymore or didn't had it, uh, uh, they, anyhow they stopped founding it. Uh, and the reason of course for them to start was that Flextronics did a lot of FPGA and ASIC designs conversions uh, and it was perfect for them to have a, a IPs that were not locked to any specific vendors, so this was good. Uh, anyhow, uh, and then it was a few years that not very much happened uh, at Open Course, and uh, in 2007, Damian announced that he didn't had the, the, you say the engagement or, or power to, to run Open Course anymore, uh, and he actually set it up for, for Seoul, so we and some other guys, uh, parties, raised our hand and said we are interested to take the flag and, and run this, go on with this one. Uh, and after some discussion, we actually bought it from, from Damien. So, and uh, quite soon after that, we, we realized that this was not in perhaps so good shape that we thought it was. It was, and that's might be natural. He kind of designed it from start to run a few, few projects as open source, and then it added on a lot of loads of projects and uh, forums and other stuff. And it was kind of a, at least that it was a mess to to maintain. So we decided to to redesign both the site and the system, uh, and did it from scratch. So today it's actually based on Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. It's running, open course is running on four quite heavy servers with Ride 5 system. And it's uh, connected with uh, good, good internet connection. Uh, and since then, uh, yeah, we are maintaining and, and doing updates and improvements to the sites. And uh, I think mostly it's done uh, driven by, by input from users and so on. I know there's a lot of people here have more to ask from that, but uh, that's perhaps a discussion for, for later on today. But from our point of view, we have a, there's a big, big number of users, and, and I know that, that uh, there's always parts that want sort of thing, and, and I fully, fully respect that, but let's have this discussion later on. Uh, short history about the Open Risk Project, then. Uh, I made the first bullets are the same as the, as the open course slides. It was founded by Damian Lampert. Uh, and quite soon, as I said, Flexonics found was going in and doing funding for this. So we had an <coughs> option to, or possibility to hire a small team uh, of engineers that actually worked this and got it up to a first pretty good stage of, of, of uh, where it is. Uh, and as I said, when, when Flextronics stop, stopped funding this, uh, there were less development and engagement for a couple of years. Uh, and in 2008, uh, since we started working with this for 2007, a little bit before, uh, but started doing 
customer products and finding that this was perhaps not as good, in good shape as we thought. We're setting up quite a big uh, work package for bug fixes and improvements that was done in during 2008. Uh, and then 2009, Julius joined Warsock. You worked heavily and still working, did a good job on the Orpsock version 2. And uh, I guess we have some more information about that later and the version 3 from Olof. Yeah. Uh, and we also, yes, I think our engagement and also Julius that was extremely engaged in this kind of, so we have to have, see how we can engage more people into this there that are interested to, to actually help, help up with the development. It's an open source thing, it should be done by as many parties as possible. So we try to use it a lot of good promotions and we said we have to do some development boards to make sure it's easy to for everyone, a single user or a company or whatever, to start just playing around with this and see if they like it. Perhaps, hopefully, join in. Um, so that's what we did, uh, and today, I mean, let's look here, and this probably a small part of everyone that is engaged in this today. It is extremely fun to see how it has been exploding or increasing since 2010, perhaps. Expanding, not, not exploding. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's uh, depending on what you compare. Yeah, sure. <laughs> From one part to 25. Exploding usually is like, it dies, right? Ah, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, it, uh, I know sure. mean, yeah. And also, I, I would <laughs> say it's, it's <laughs> fun to see <laughs> that it's not just guys doing RTL or something, it's guys or with interest and skills from all parts that is very necessary, I think, like tools, uh, operating systems, yeah. all parts that are actually necessary to have something useful coming out from this. So that's great. Uh, open cores. Yes, the, the status, 970 pro projects today approximately, 565,000 users, 600,000 page views, 70,000 visitors every month. Uh, this could be a little bit interest for just a couple of years ago. It was for sure Asia that was the, the region that grew, had the most growth in number of, of users and visitors. But the last one and a half years, actually, Europe, if uh, this presentation one and a half years ago, years ago said Europe about 35, Asia 35, and America a little bit higher. But today, actually, it's Europe that has coming in more, more number of users from, from, from Europe. Uh, a little bit the uh, vision or goal with the uh, open course. Uh, from from our point of view, and that is to to make sure to offer a, a platform or a reliable site and community for publication or hosting of open source related hardware. Uh, that's the the foundation. But I think yes, that's important, or perhaps the most important thing is to collect things and make sure we have like an ecosystem around open source hardware. Because uh, otherwise if you just have a few single blocks that just are the RTL or just are some parts, I don't think it will be hard at least for, for new users to, to start coming in in the group and start using it. And it will be hard probably for, for users that want to use it for products, their own products or whatever. Uh, if we don't have a good system there we can find all parts necessary for actually using this this technology. Uh, so that's I think it's a very important goal or something that Open Course has to to achieve or, or support. Uh, it should of course always be available and free to use, and it should always promote open source hardware. A little bit division or goal about the Open Risk project or IPs from from the Open Course overall. Uh, I think also we're doing a lot of, of work around integration or verification and packaging of these IPs uh, and 
yeah, in some way making it like uh, easy for, for people to use it or, or and for from a company standpoint they want to use it for commercial use have to be like uh, they have to like trust that this technology is, is good it's, it's not enough if, if they see it it seems good they have to have see that someone can test it or, or yeah there's, there's a lot of things and, and hopefully this kind of packaging and, and also of course promoting can 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 help that uh, we will always of course supporting with this ecosystem I spoke about, make sure we have suitable development boards and, and tools and software. We are not experts in all, all parts, but we are always interested in making sure they are available or, or be there. Uh, I've been asked to present some kind some projects that we done related to to open source hardware and I've set up a list of projects of interest that have the open risk process in, involved. Uh, long time ago we did a project for Astra Telecom, which is a former Ericsson company. Uh, it was what we actually did, they have a telephone switch with a lot of different boards in and one of these boards there were three different ASICs and we convert this the, the, the IP, so the, the, this ASIC, these three ASICs into one ASIC and it was, was including the open risk processor and some other IPs. And this was a really good or a successful project in terms of both the technology, they were satisfied with the function and all things, but also we got the feedback that they did a huge cost reduction on, on their products when they designed it further on. Uh, we done some job from a Swedish company called Swero, which actually are uh, needed a replacement for how they communicate with the robots. Uh, uh, we have another one that is a similar kind of product as we did from Zero, but it's actually for nuclear plant stations. Uh, also that including the, the open risk processor and, and some other things. Uh, we have done three projects. We were part of three, three different projects for OSC and Microtech, uh, which was in the space industry. And uh, I know that you recently released uh, the satellite, didn't you? Yes. Successfully. Yeah. And that has the open risk processor in it? It has actually, how many do you think there were in that? I, I think actually there were more than one, but yes. And we got some telemetry data back from it as far as I understand. Oh, so it's okay. alive. It's yeah, I saw the press release and it was actually released from the main satellite or yeah. main Unfortunately, we didn't get full function out of that because uh, we had this communication modem that was supposed to be for <coughs> um, satellite to satellite, mm -hmm. but apparently the license is only allowed to be, or maybe it was the other way around, but we couldn't get the license to run the modem that we wanted. So ah, okay, okay. Like half of our functionality wasn't there, but at least we got um, everything out of the parts that we were allowed to turn. So. Yeah, okay. Uh, another one is, uh, this one, it's a, a very, very, very big company. Uh, I'm not allowed to present who it is, uh, but they will have decided that they wanted to use the open risk processes, so like a yeah, generic processor that they can use in a lot of different products. Uh, but, uh, and they are worldwide based with sites all over the world. So that's come out some fun things from that yeah, for now and, and for a long time further on. Uh, we also done a project within the finance area, uh, which is actually a, a kind of a back-end system for, for within the finance sector. Uh, we are working right now with a company called Ivensus, which is a German and US based company, uh, which actually have communicated with all their different machines or whatever with the very old uh, protocol token bus uh, and now they kind of well, change not even that token bus is actually a, a different standard they have a token bus like network ah, okay <laughs> <laughs> anyhow they see yeah, that right, they need yeah. to update <laughs> this so what we do is a product that further on uses ethernet uh, fiber i think or or 
a product for that, and this will also be running Linux. Uh, another one is a uh, US based research organization, what they say. And um, what they actually do, they are supposed to measure seismic, so that's what it's called, uh, data on glaciers. Uh, mm -hmm. So they will place this, these units on different things, and it will communicate with their central station, and it will be sitting there for like long, long time. So it's, of course, a power power issue that we have to, to handle also. But that's, that's a fun product. project. Uh, another one that also is not, not uh, open, I can't say much, but that's kind of a cool and really, really big project as well. It's a company that will develop a product for secure or crypt uh, internet connection. So that was some projects that for sure is, is highly related to, to this, what we do, or what we will discuss here today. Uh, some products, uh, but I won't go into anything of this. Michael from Morsock will present a little more about that and perhaps mainly the boards that are not available but will be available within short. Sorry? The yeah, it is. Yeah, but it's not my computer. It's actually for for once, it's not my computer that is messing it up. That's the combination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, thank you. And uh, if there's any question now, or should we have them later, or I'd be here all day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quick question: Jan. Uh, Will you make these slides available? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'd like to update the the Wikipedia page, which is quite important. Has a lot of a section on applications of open risk and I'd like to update it with all the ones that yeah, <laughs> you've yeah, got on there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Which would require us to publish these slides uh, somewhere that's not Wikipedia to not be marked original research and delete them. Right. <laughs> I presume we can put them on the uh, open risk wiki as the uh, part of the materials from this conference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I will just, but I can check if there is any of these projects that we not should make yeah, up totally available. But I think most of them is the ones that are not I set comfortable, so it should be quite safe. I just some some, uh, uh, but otherwise it's perfectly fine to to make this available. Thanks. Cool.